Hey guys, Tim Durham with DroneMappingTools.com and in today's quick tip video, I'm going to show you how to do a strip alignment in LiDAR 360. So what I want to do is I want to switch over to Topo Drone processing software. And so this is the software that I use to process the LiDAR data from the Topo LiDAR 100. And so this will very quickly take the LiDAR data and stitch it together to create the initial point cloud. And so the purpose of doing a strip alignment is that as the drone flies back and forth in the parallel paths, you're gonna have a little bit of variation in the pitch and roll of the drone. And the IMU is accounting for that, but there can still be a little bit of difference as it's flying back and forth. And so LiDAR 360 is gonna take all the data, break it up into four different strips. It's gonna take every point that was generated by each path and then it's going to calibrate it and merge it together. So this is fixing to be done and so we'll then go into LiDAR 360, open it up, do the strip alignment, then you're ready to work with it in another program or if you want to con continue doing additional work with the point cloud in LiDAR 360, you can do that. There are tons of tools within LiDAR 360 and we'll do additional quick tip videos on some of those. So instead of always having very long videos, one of the things I'm gonna start doing is doing short videos on specific topics. So now let's go to LiDAR 360. And what I'm gonna do is bring in the cloud, the point cloud that was generated. So I'm gonna bring this in. And the first thing I wanna do, I did a video on doing reprojections. If you know you're not gonna to have to deal with any reprojections, then you know, you don't have to do this, but I always want to set the initial reference system that was used when I generated it within the Topo LiDAR processing. So for that, it is going to be the SNAB D88. And if you want to watch on how to create your custom reference system in four UTM coordinate systems, you have to create a new one within LiDAR 360 because they do not have the vertical datum associated with it. So check out my other video on that. So I'm gonna hit apply. It'll bring this point cloud in, should move pretty quickly. And since I'm recording, this will move a little bit slower than it normally does, but it'll move quickly. And I tell you, LiDAR 360, very, very powerful program. There's a lot you can do with it. Very good for taking the raw point cloud data and extracting all the files you need to give to your clients. So the first thing we're gonna do is we come up, we click on processing and I'm gonna click on boresight and I have to open the trajectory file. And again, this was, well, you do have to click okay, select the folder. And what I do is I go ahead and click a new folder and I call it workspace. And that is so that it will put all the files created in a subfolder. So I'm gonna click that. And now it wants me to open up the track file. And so that's gonna be this most recent one right here. Okay, now for the system I'm using here, I need to first unhide the first row because this will tell me what I need to assign for every column. And so this needs to be X, Y, height, latitude, longitude. We're gonna skip because you can't have height twice. We're gonna ignore that one. And then we're gonna go to roll, pitch, heading, and then GPS time. Then I'm gonna rehide row one because we do not need that. I'm gonna hit apply. Uh-oh, and if you make a boo-boo, you get in a hurry like I did, latitude, longitude. Let's make double sure, lat long, yes. Okay, so we're gonna hit apply. This is the trajectory path that the drone flew. You can, you can do your lines one of two ways. You can either, you can draw a polygon where I can come across and just click, click, do a polygon. Let me just show you. So I can sit here and tell them this, this, and this, and then I can click on select by polygon but you need to cut these ends off. Or let's do select on trajectory. Now I can just come in and I can just select and I'll always start a little from the end where it started. I'm not just gonna pick the very, very end point. So I'm gonna give it to where it has kind of smoothed out. Okay, so here's gonna be, there's one. I'm gonna come here, come down to right there. There's two here. And when you're planning your flights, it is very important to make sure that your turnarounds extend well beyond the area that you want to cover. You want nice straight paths. So here's this one, and we'll come down to about right there, okay? Now I'm gonna do split trajectory. Now we have the four flight lines. The next thing we wanna do is we're gonna cut the point cloud 
based on these trajectories. So I click on cut point cloud. And again, what it's doing, it's going to match up all the points that go with every path. And there's going to be overlap. And so I'm going to show you how we get rid of the overlap. So we're going to add data to the project. And after you add the data to the project, there's really no need to keep this file. So I'm going to go ahead and select, on, uh, select remove. And I'm now left with the four individual point clouds. And so we're going to say match the point cloud and trajectory. So we're going to match it. And this is where it assigns the color. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn on EDL, the dome lighting, so you can kind of see the structures. And let me just do something here. So I'm going to do this profile tool. We'll do it at 0 0.2. I'm going to come across, uh, there's some buildings here. OK, you can see, you see, this is the whole purpose in doing the strip alignment. And we're going to have to do strip alignment and calibration all in one swoop. But you see the, the misalignment. And that is what we're actually fixing. Okay. So now that I have matched the point cloud, what I want to do is come in. I'm going to run calibration. LiDAR 360 does an excellent job of auto calibrating. I literally, I would say, I don't know, 19 times out of 20, I can come in and just click on calculate. It will come up with the calibration values that I need, apply those, and everything aligns beautifully. Now, one thing that is very important for this to happen is to have a base unit where you are flying. Having that base unit on site in very close proximity will greatly improve your calibration. So I'm, I've already hit apply here. Now I'm going to apply it to the selected point cloud files. So the first time it was just to what is loaded on the screen. Now I'm going to permanently apply it to the, the files themselves. So I hit apply. It'll go through and apply it to each of these four point clouds, they're actually individual point clouds. And in case you do not know, LiDAR 360 creates Lie data files. So it, it, it changes it over to a kind of a proprietary format that it can work very efficiently in. So instead of it working and creating LAS files, it has Lie data files, which are their proprietary files, and then they can work, they being the program, can work very efficiently within its own format. So now that we have done the calibration, let's come back and do a profile again. Buffer. And I'm, I'm going to show you the, the difference. Now, now look at there. That's what we like. As I did on one uh, video, that's like coffee and Coffee and milk, coffee and creamer, that's what you want it like. Now, if you had issues in your alignment, then you can do what is called an, a trajectory adjustment. That'll be a separate video to show you how to do that. It's not what I would call intuitive. So I will make a separate video on doing the trajectory alignment if you need further adjustment to get your point clouds nice and aligned. So now that we have finished that, what we're going to do is we're going to cut overlap. and. This field right here says classify. So the very first time you run it, what it's going to do, it's going to run this classification for overlap. And it's it's just classifying the points. It's not deleting them. It's classifying them. So just like later when you do uh, classification for your ground points, building, high vegetation, low vegetation, it is classifying your ground points. You can leave those. If for some reason you wanted just to leave them as classified, and, and keep them part of your point cloud, you can do that. I do not. So I will come in here and first, as a matter of fact, let me just show you. Go up to classification, bring this over, and I'm turning off not classified and overlap. And you'll see I had a lot of overlap. And so there was a ditch right here, very deep, pretty deep ditch. And I wanted to, I needed my flight lines to be on both sides of that ditch so I could cover it well. Um, so that was a big part of the development here. So anyway, I did my flight lines so that they flew basically on both sides of the ditch and had more overlap than was needed, but that's what we did. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do cut overlap. And this time, instead of classify, I'm going to choose delete. So I hit delete, click on OK. It's going to delete these points. As a matter of fact, they're going to disappear from the screen because we're in the classification view, and I only have overlap turned on. Well, we're now in the process of deleting the overlap points, so they will no longer be 
visible in the new data set. So I'm going to get rid of these old ones. Each time I add new stuff, I generally will go back and remove the old ones. Okay. So again, we don't see it, but I can come back in to turn not classified on. And there is my entire point cloud. For all practical purposes, we, we're done with strip alignment. I can come back and go to tools and I can merge the files all into one. And then we can begin working within the, if you have the terrain module, working with um, cleaning up the point cloud, classifying. Uh, but that'll be for another video. This right here, this point cloud is now finished with the strip alignment. Everything looks good and we're done. So. But if this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up. If you need LiDAR, let me switch over to the website. I'm going to show you. Go to dronemappingtools.com. We have equipment, the LiDAR sensors, software, anything you need for mapping, be it photogrammetry or LiDAR collection, we can take good care of you. Visit that. If you want the data set for this video, just go to dronemappingtools.com, contact us through the contact page, and I'll send you the data set so that you have it to go through and go along with this video and see exactly how it's done. So again, thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.